When the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico began in April, naturally occurring microbes began their work, gobbling up some of the oil. When the microbes die, oxygen in the water is used up as they decompose. Scientists have been concerned that if this occurred in mass quantities as a serious consequence of the oil spill, it could create hypoxic or dead zones of low oxygen in the water. Well, what happens when you have no oxygen on the bottom, first of all, it kills all the critters that can't swim away, the worms and crabs in the sediment, but it makes this habitat unavailable. It's like a false bottom, and so they can't swim down to the bottom to avoid predators. They can't get in the cooler water, so they're up in the surface waters where it's lighter, so they're more susceptible to predators, but it's also warmer, so their metabolism is, is, is higher and they require more foods. Mike Roman and his colleagues at the University of Maryland's Horn Point Laboratory study the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico that has occurred every summer for over 20 years and extends along the coast from the mouth of the Mississippi River to Texas. This dead zone is caused by fertilizers and other chemicals being washed into the river. They have data going back to their first study in 2003. This year, they looked for any changes due to the spill. We measured these plants and plankton and, and fish, um, and uh, the distributions looked about the same as they would have uh, in, in these other years. There, there was low oxygen water in the bottom. They avoided it. Um, the area wasn't particularly large compared to what was predicted. We had sensors that, that would uh, detected oil. We didn't see any oil. Roman and his colleagues use an array of sensitive devices to measure oxygen levels, salinity, temperature, and population density of flora and fauna. Many of the measurements come from a device called a scan fish, towed behind a vessel. One device the scientists added to the scan fish can count zooplankton, a key indicator of sea health. As a zooplankton ecologist, I'm biased, but I also feel like it's an integral part of the food web. It's directly between the primary producers like the algae that use the sun for energy and the fish, which are commercially and uh, ecologically important for various reasons. So the zooplankton sort of mediate the flow of energy and the flow of materials from the primary producers up to the larger animals. Pearson says early data doesn't indicate any dramatic change due to the oil. At a first glance, you know, it was a lot of happy, healthy uh, copepods out there. Roman, Pearson, and their fellow researchers still have a lot of data to analyze to determine if the oil affected the hypoxic zone they've been studying for years. However, their study can't answer questions about the rest of the Gulf. We were fortunate to have this five years of baseline data. It's too bad they didn't have the five years of baseline data where a lot of the oil went. If you're going to have all this exploration for oil in the Gulf, we should have a, a monitoring program in place. Roman thinks it's unlikely there is a very serious dead zone in another part of the Gulf due to the BP spill because he feels scientists would have found it by now. He does have concerns about the effect of the oil spill on the food web. The thing that I worry about is um, the little things that eat the bacteria, that get eaten by bigger things, get eaten by bigger things. Some of those oil compounds will be around the food web for a while and may affect the reproduction behavior, and those are the things that should be studied now.